Introduction to Microbiology Microbiology is the branch of biology which deals with the study of microorganisms like viruses, bacteria, algae, fungi, and protozoa. These microorganisms are living organisms that are too small to be visible with the naked eye. They are collectively known as microbes. Let's go back to where it started, the history of microbiology. First is the spontaneous generation debate. What is spontaneous generation? It is the hypothetical process by which living organisms develop from non-living matter. The belief in the spontaneous generation of life from non-living matter was introduced by Aristotle, who lived around 350 BC. According to Aristotle, it was readily observable that aphids arise from the dew which falls on plants, fleas from putrid matter, mice from dirty hay. This belief remained unchallenged for more than 2,000 years, until Francesco Reddy experiments on flies, first to formally challenge the accepted belief of spontaneous generation. Reddy's question is where do maggots come from? His hypothesis is maybe maggots come from flies. Then he do an experiment. Reddy put meat into three separate jars. Francesco Reddy made an experiment to test the spontaneous creation of maggots by placing fresh meat in different jars. The first jar was left open, the second jar was covered with netting, then the third jar was completely sealed. Days later, the open jar contained maggots, whereas the sealed jar contained no maggots. He did note that maggots were found on the exterior surface of the netting that covered the jar. Riddy successfully demonstrated that the maggots came from fly eggs and thereby helped to disprove spontaneous generation. 1976. Anton van Leeuwenhoek observed the first bacteria. He was observing the lake water and found these organisms. This sparked a start to the world to microbiology. As a draper, he used lenses to examine cloth. This probably led to his interest in lens making. He assembled hundreds of microscopes some of which magnified objects 270 times. As he looked at things with his microscopes, he discovered microorganisms. These are organisms so tiny that they are invisible to the naked eye. He called these tiny living organisms animalcules. He first described bacteria, protozoans, and many cells of the human body. The controversy over spontaneous generation. The question is what causes tiny living things to appear in decaying broth. Needham's hypothesis is spontaneous generation. Spallisani's hypothesis is microbes come from the air and boiling will kill them. In 1745, John Needham published a report of his own experiments in which he briefly boiled broth infused with plant or animal matter, hoping to kill all pre-existing microbes. He then sealed the flask. After a few days, Needham observed that the broth had become cloudy and a single drop contained numerous microscopic creatures Needham concluded that these tiny organisms had spontaneously generated from the non-living matter of the broth. Flaws with his experiment are the flask was not sealed and was exposed to the air, and he likely did not boil the broth enough to kill all pre-existing microbes. Lazzaro Spallanzani, also an Italian scientist, reviewed both Reddy's and Needham's data and experimental design and concluded that perhaps Needham's heating of the bottle did not kill everything inside. He constructed his own experiment by placing broth in each of the separate bottles, boiling the broth in both bottles, then sealing one bottle and leaving the other open. Days later, the unsealed bottle was teeming with small living things that he could observe more clearly with the newly invented microscope. Heated but sealed flasks remained clear, without any signs of spontaneous growth unless the flasks were subsequently opened to the air. This suggested that microbes were introduced into these flasks from the air. This certainly excluded spontaneous generation as a viable theory. Spallanzani's results contradicted the findings of Needham. In response to Spallanzani's findings, Needham argued that life originates from a life force that was destroyed during Spallanzani's extended boiling. Any subsequent sealing of the flasks then prevented new life force from entering and causing spontaneous generation. So although his experiment was successful, a strong rebuttal blunted his claims. The debate over spontaneous generation continued well into the 19th century, with scientists serving as proponents of both sides. 
To settle the debate, the Paris Academy of Sciences offered a prize for resolution of the problem. Louis Pasteur, a prominent French chemist who had been studying microbial fermentation and the causes of wine spoilage, accepted the challenge. In 1858, Pasteur filtered air through a gun cotton filter and, upon microscopic examination of the cotton, found it full of microorganisms, suggesting that the exposure of a broth to air was not introducing a life force to the broth but rather airborne microorganisms. Later, Pasteur made a series of flasks with long twisted necks, like that of a swan, which he used to boil broth to sterilize it. The idea was that the bend in the neck prevented falling particles from reaching the broth, while still allowing the free flow of air. Louis Pasteur heated an infusion sealed in a vessel with a S-shaped or swan neck, let it cool, and then broke of the tip of the vessel. This allowed fresh air to enter, but any particulate matter was trapped in the bend of the neck. The culture did not putrefy, even though it had access to air. To answer the objection that some vital principle in the culture itself had been destroyed, Pasteur again heated the sealed flask, but this time broke the neck above the bend so that air could enter directly. The result is the culture putrefied. To answer the objection that the fresh air simply reactivated some vital principle in the culture, Pasteur repeated the first experiment, but this time tipped the culture so as to allow the infusion to contact the bend of the neck that was in contact with the outside. The culture putrefied, which showed that the source of putrefaction was outside the culture and not spontaneously generated within the culture. Pasteur's set of experiments irrefutably disproved the theory of spontaneous generation and earned him the prestigious Al Humbert Prize from the Paris Academy of Sciences in 1862. In a subsequent lecture in 1864, Pasteur articulated omni vivum ex vivo, meaning life only comes from life. In this lecture, he recounted his famous swan neck flask experiment, stating that Life is a germ and a germ is life. Never will the doctrine of spontaneous generation recover from the mortal blow of this simple experiment. To Pasteur's credit, it never has.